In this video, we will talk about the concept of power in electrical circuits. So we have discussed the concept of power uh, in terms of the rate at which the work is done in the past when we discussed the Newtonian mechanics. Uh, so the power was defined as the work done divided by the time of work which the work was done and we defined this as average power. And this concept is still applies even whether even if it is for an electrical circuit. Now an electrical circuit is basically nothing but an energy transfer system. So you have energy generated somewhere and that energy is expended at the output or at the load. So for example, if you have a battery, okay, if you have a battery, you have a positive terminal and you have a negative terminal for this battery, you know, it could be a nine volt or something else, then the internal chemistry of this battery generates a higher potential at the at the at the cathode compared to the anode which is negatively charged and this potential has the has the power to drive electrons from the negative electrode to the positive electrode and if you put a load between the two two terminals then you can basically uh, power that load so that load could be a light bulb it could be a motor or something like that right so if you connect let's say you know a light bulb between the positive and negative terminal then the current can flow through this and it could light up uh, this this light bulb so the energy generated inside the battery is now used to light up the bulb so most of the energy generated in the in the battery is used to convert it into thermal energy of an inefficient uh, bulb um, and some of it would be converted into the light energy if instead of a light bulb you have a motor connected you have a motor connected let's say this is the positive terminal and negative terminal and you have a motor connected let's call it m over here that's the positive side negative side then this motor can essentially rotate. So all the electrical energy into the system, into the battery, is converted into the mechanical energy of the motor and so on, right? So now the question is, what kind of energy is generated in the battery and what kind of energy is expended? And similarly, what kind of power, which is basically defined as the rate at which the energy is generated, uh, produce as well as consume, right? And that's what we want to understand. So the first thing is to understand that we have defined the voltage as the work done over per unit charge, right? That's what we've defined. So in an electrical field, if you have a charge, so this is our electrical field, if we have a charge, you know, DQ, and you have to move this charge from point A to point B, let's say, then there is a certain amount of work that has to be done, and that work is defined as the voltage times DQ, okay? So if I want to define the power, the average power, all I have to do is, in fact, I don't have to call it average power now, I, I'll just call it P, is defined as the rate at which the work is done, dW over dt, so that's V times dQ over dt, and we know dQ over dt is nothing but the current. So the power is actually equal to voltage times current. So if you want to know at what rate the work is being done by the internal chemistry of a battery, if you know the voltage across it, and if you have a circuit where the current is flowing, then you can find out what the power generation would be, right? Similarly, that power that's generated would be consumed on the load on the output side. So we can find out the power consumption by using this formula as well. But from Ohm's law, we know that V is equal to I times R. So P can be also written as I times R times I, and that means P is equal to I squared times R. So this is a different way of writing the power consumption if you know the current and resistance. Another way would be that we could write I is equal to V over R, and then substitute this in here and get P equal to V times V over R and that would be V squared over R. So P is also equal to V squared over R. So these are just different ways. So, you know, one, two, and three, all the three formulas are equivalent to one another because they're just different way of writing what the power consumed at the output would be. So let's do an example. So let's say we have a 100, and 100 watt bulb, okay? We have a 100 watt bulb and it's connected to 110 volt AC main supply, right? Okay, let's say that's the case. So here's my bulb and it's connected to 10 volt AC supply, and this is 100 watt. So the question is, what is the current for the circuit, you know, and what is the voltage and things like that. Let's say that's what we want to find out. So since we know the power consumed at the bulb, which is 100 watt given to you, and the voltage ap applied across this is 110 volts, so that will be 110 times uh, the current. So I'm using a formula P equal to V times I over here. So we can get what I would be. I would be 100 divided by 110 ampere. So that comes out to 0.90 amp, and that's the current consumed by this 100 watt light bulb. 
So the next question could be that let's say this light bulb is operating is, is on for eight hours. Okay, now the question is if you operate this light bulb for eight hours, what is the, the total cost of uh, electricity in lighting this bulb up for eight hours? Okay, now the cost has to, the, if you want to find out the cost, then you have to know at what rate your utility is going to charge you for electricity. So if you have ever opened an electricity bill from your utility company, you might see, you know, lots of numbers, but you know, one of the numbers would tell you basically, you know, how much one kilowatt hour costs for you. So one kilowatt hour of electricity might be given as, let's say 15 cents, 15 cents okay so first of all what is this one kilowatt hour is this the unit of a power is this unit of energy so let's look at that so we have we know that the power is defined as a work done divided by the time right so we can see that if power is given in kilowatt which is the case over here and it's multiplied by the time then we would basically get the units of the the work done right so one kilowatt hour is basically the total energy that you can consume and that would cost you 15 cents so we have to find out what is the kilowatt hour or the energy used in lighting this bulb up for eight eight hours right so 100 watt if you put it in the in the kilowatt would be what 0 0.1 kilowatt right 100 watt is 0.1 kilowatt and it's used for eight hours so the let's multiply it by eight hours so we get what 0 0.8 kilowatt hour that's what we get so the question is now what is the cost of 0 0.8 kilowatt hour if one kilowatt hour is 15 cents then 0.8 kilowatt hour would be what 15 so we can find that would be 15 cents times 0 0.8 kilowatt hour and that comes out to what 12 cents okay so so that would that would be the cost of operating a light bulb of 100 watt for eight hours so, so if you have ever wondered as to how to compute the cost of electricity in your home now you know what you have to do all you have to do is find out what the power rating for each of these uh, appliances in your home is and then you can add them together and you can you know see how many hours you operate them um, multiply with, with that find out the total energy consumption and then find out what your rate is for one kilowatt hour and you'll find what your electricity bill 